June O'Berry Hale. I was born in April 13, 1936. I graduated Hernanda High in class of 1954. Uh, my family moved back to Hernanda County because my dad was raised in Spring Lake. And we moved Christmas Eve of 1943. So I've been in the county about almost 70 years because I was seven years old and I'm 77. So what was it like, you know, compared to today? What can you remember about life in the, your early years here? Both of my grandparents at that time lived in Tampa, and I remember the streetcars, and it was a cultural change to move to Hernanda County because we moved in an old farmhouse about 12 miles east of Brooksville in a community called Rydal at that time, <laughs> and, which is on Croom Road. At that time, it was all open territory. PK's Ranch was not here then. It was, uh, I believe, Mr. Hamner bought the what is now PK Ranch when I was a kid, but I don't remember the former owners. And Spring Lake Road was not where, uh, or 50 wasn't where you see it now. Where was it? It was about a half a mile further down, going towards Walmart distribution, and you had a dirt road that went through the woods and came into Baseball Pond. Okay. And then you went, after base, after you surrounded Baseball Pond, you went up to Spring Lake Highway. Well, the country kids stayed in the country. The city kids did all the activities in town, but if you didn't have a way in town, which most of us that lived rode the school buses didn't, mm -hmm. you missed a lot of things that my grandchildren have been able to enjoy. Like for what, what for example? Can you think of anything? Uh, joining the band, and one of the neighbor's boy was in the band, and luckily then we had a very nice sheriff that came in, Sim Lohman. And Sim would send a deputy out to patrol that end of the county when it was time for Frank to go home. Nice. And I've always admired Sim for helping. Well, mm -hmm. he was a good friend of my father's. Mm -hmm. I rode the school bus, which was an old beat up bus that had seats running down the center. Instead of like now, the kids are, you know, sitting this way, they ran down the center, like four rows of seats down the center of the bus. Oh wow, okay. So if you were sitting in the middle, or on both aisles, and you had to go to a seat in the back, you stepped on toes. Yeah. At that time, I think the county had three or four buses, because our bus route went to Spring Lake, mm -hmm. came out from town, went by some of the Spring Lake, out to the Rydal where I lived, on to Croom, back what is now McIntyre Road, which was a Big Trail to Conrock and up through Munden Hill, which was a dirt. All these roads were dirt. So how was that bus ride? Seventy miles a day. Oh wow! On a old for a seven-year-old kid. Because when I was growing up, the elementary school was where your first Baptist church is, and uh, buildings that were first and second grade in the cafeteria, I believe, are still behind Baptist, the new Baptist church. Okay. And then the high school was across the football field. What was school like for you when you were here growing up? Because I know you had your kids go through the school system. It must have been different for you. Oh, yeah. It had modernized a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have any memory, fond memories of school as a child? Um... Very much so. My high school years were a lot of fun because at, when the school buses came in behind, between the elementary and the high school, mm -hmm. all the buses came and the bus barn was there. And you uh, went over to the high school, and everybody from 7th grade to 12th grade, you would sit out on the hill where the basketball courts were and visit until time to go into class. And then everybody split up and went to class. So your friends were 7th, 8th, ninth graders, to, all the way up to 12th. Mm -hmm. And I met June Turner that was in earlier. Mm -hmm. When she started school, and she was so tiny, she could hardly reach the bus steps of all. I remember lining up out inside the schools to wait to go in. Mm -hmm. And some teachers had quiet lines. Mrs. Treeman was a sixth grade teacher during my elementary time. I never had her, but she was a sixth grade teacher. She would stand up on the fire escape and point her to her class, and they would not make a sound coming into the building. And that, as a kid, impressed me that that teacher had that kind of control. Yeah. Because my classes were noisy. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> if my memory's right, there's sometimes 40 kids in our class, and it was hard to learn. I didn't start wearing glasses until I was almost eight, I believe. 
So seeing was hard. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize at that time that I did have a hearing problem. Mm -hmm. My first seven years were spent next door to an ice plant with the heavy machinery running 24-7. Oh, wow. At the oh. end of the war, we got five new buses in the county. Oh, really? And our bus was five. Oh, and wow. later we got another new bus because we beat the heck out of that bus on the sand roads. I bet. Yeah, I bet. And we got number nine. Nice. And number nine was our bus with Rachel Hanson. She was one of the Batten kids. Drove our bus until I graduated. Oh, wow. So from second grade on, I rode the school bus. Yeah. Do you remember the library being built here? Oh, yeah. When I was, I think I was in elementary school, they had a fun drive for t every kid was to bring a dime to help build a new library. Wow. And of course, it's something, this was the main library then. This room, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, and that was the front entrance, I believe. This entrance, I believe, was the main entrance. Mm -hmm. And of course, this picture was on the wall then. Mm -hmm. After the shipyard, Dad went to work for the railroad in Trilby, and he was allowed to carry a gun. Mm -hmm. So Sim issued him a special deputy, no pay, right? but to help volunteer-wise. Sure. Just so I grew up with Dad after football games. Most kids went to parties or something. Or I went to the jail with Dad and listened to the deputies. <laughs> That's neat. What can you remember about um, that? I mean, that seems like something that not a lot of kids would have had the opportunity to participate in, spending time with law enforcement in the area during that time period. Can you remember um, anything in particular about visiting with the sheriff's office or anything like that? I remember Sim as a very kind man and his wife and his children were born during that time. Mm -hmm. As far as you got to see the little one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Red Brass was one of the deputies. And I don't remember the others, but that Red Brass and Dad were friends. So I remember Red and Sim. Well, my family is many generations. The Townsend House Church at County Line Road is my great grandmother's grandparents. Okay. Uh, Nancy Hancock, Hope Pritchard. Okay. She was Jack Towns and Jack and Caroline's. And my granny was named Alethea Caroline for Alethea Garrison, who was another pioneer family. Wow. And, and what did you say your main name was? The your, O'Berry. O'Berry. Okay. The O'Berry's four brothers came in from Georgia, and some of them settled in Hernando. Well, at that time, Hernan Pasco, Hernando and Pasco was one huge county. Right. Fourth Sunday in May is the Townsend House reunion, and we got. Quite a few of the family coming back from the Hancock side, which is the Townsends. Is that related to the uh, the Gro Hancock Groves mm -hmm. right over there? So that's yeah, all that was um, a descendant of one of great grandmother's brothers. Well, okay, so you're sort of kind of related to them too. <laughs> Probably everybody in this area. <laughs> Younger Ed McKenzie that just passed away this summer, and I were in class together, and he, he used to laugh and say, I was kin to one half of Spring Lake, he was kin to the other, but we weren't kin. <laughs> what types of things were there in Hernando County, as far as entertainment is concerned, as you were growing up? The Dixie Theater came in, and I don't remember if it was here, or it was built when I was in high school, and I remember the 41 drive-in, and that was the two things, and the VFW Hall down the hill was uh, where they, we had our proms, Okay. and things like that. But my parents were ones that, I'm an only child, so my parents were very hovering type parents. Mm -hmm. And most of the entertainment, we had some neighbors that lived up Croom Road, probably another quarter of a mile. And I remember going to their house and mama taking the big canners and they had a wood stove and Miss Whitten, twin sister to Louise Ross that used to be the principal when my, I think she was assistant principal when my kid's daughter, youngest daughter was in school back in 83. Her twin sister and my mother used to can together, so I grew up knowing her daughters, the Whitten kids. Mainly it was just visit neighbors, go fishing, and it was a great treat when uh, Mary Smith had had Mary's fish camp down on Mud River and her husband, their two kids were lived up the road, another about two miles away. And we'd get together and go on the Withlacoochee fishing and take lunch. Nice. And Dad would fry fish or... Whatever you caught. Did you eat what you caught out of the Withlacoochee? Mm -hmm. And then we'd go to Bayport and Dad knew how to make a cast net. So he made uh, nets for catching crabs down in Bayport. Because okay. my mom and Dad used to get up before day and go to Bayport fishing. And then Mother would change into her dress clothes, go to work, work all day. 
Oh, wow. And then go home to the, whatever fish they caught, Dad, and have it ready to cook for supper. But a lot of my summer activities are spent fishing with my parents, because my dad loved, and mom both loved to fish. I've walked many a mile on the Withlacoochee. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> Gone up on some of the knolls, cut a limb off a cedar tree for Christmas tree. Really? And places I couldn't get, I have no idea how to get to. Walk through palmetto swamps or scrubs that, no way would I go in there now. <laughs> and the mother played a guitar and Mary Smith played a piano and her husband Jim did a violin or a fiddle as we call it. And we'd get together and families would play. But a lot of it was every Sunday you went to Tr Trilby. Daddy worked at Trilby on the railroad when I was after the war. And you go every Sunday to Trilby Method and go to work with Daddy, walk up the hill to the church. Wow. And I still go there. In Trilby, really? Wow. Trilby Methodist. Because I was, you know, our family's Methodist from back to the towns and why it's on the other half, family side. Wow. I remember in high school, I got my class ring a day before the other kids because Daddy was working, so he brought the mail home and my class ring was in it. Oh. <laughs> so I had the first class ring in Hernando Gale. That's great. <laughs> class of 54. Oh, that's great. Do you still have it? Yeah, but it's lost its leopard off of it. So your dad would get the mail from Trilby for Brooksville? Mm -hmm. We had a post okay. office box. Oh, okay. Yeah. When I was real young, we had mail delivery, and then the bridge fell in on 50, the old 50. Well, actually, it was the old Trilby Road, or Dade City Road. The bridge fell in the river. They had a truck full of logs, and I guess the weight of the truck was just too much for the old bridge. It was an iron bridge. Whereabouts was this at? This was out just to beyond where the uh, new bridges are now, or the double bridges down on 50 okay. on the Withlacoochee. Okay, yeah, okay. It was over north of it. Okay. And real low weather, you, I think you can still see where possibly the supports were. I know you can up at Croom where that bridge went, was, re I don't know if it fell in the river too or was removed, but for years the, you could see the logs in low water where the trailer had gone into the river. So do you remember um, spending time, if your family liked to spend time outdoors, do you remember with the Lukuchi State Forest as it is now? Do you remember that area and exploring that area? When I hunted hunting? with my dad, deer hunted, squirrel hunted with my dad. And then to get uh, firewood, we used to go out, take the old truck and go out in the forest and pick up what they call lighter knots, which is pine stumps mm -hmm. and limbs, take them home and burn them in the wood stove in the fireplace. You wanted something to string your fish, you cut a palmetto limb and strung the fish on, you know, sharpen the end, strung your fish on that. Right. That's I funny. mean, you learned how to do with what you were given. And how was deer hunting back? Do you remember, um, were there more I remember deer? going in and I couldn't remember which way dad went off and I watched a buck walk away from me. Oh. <laughs> did you hunt yourself? Uh -huh. you did. I had a 12 gauge, did double you? barrel. <laughs> nice. Awesome. I never bird hunted because I never was that interested, but I squirrel hunted with a 22. Really? And my dad, I uh, used to tell him I can catch more squirrels with shotgun, and he said, no, you won't, you learn how to shoot. What's your favorite squirrel recipe? Mama used to soak them in salt water, and then she would uh, flour them and fry them like you would chicken. Huh. And once in a while, we'd put them in a pot with rice, but other than that, that's the only way to two ways that mother cooked. I mean, she used to cook rabbit. Coming into town, I saw a soft shell turtle on the road and that brought back memories because mama used to get catch soft shell turtles when we were out fishing, bring them home, butcher them and fry the soft shell turtle. Oh, wow. How's turtle taste? Oh, I like chicken. <laughs> really? Gopher is a gummy, like it has a consistency to stick to your teeth. So we only cooked one gopher because one of dad's friends said, oh, I got this gopher stew recipe. You got to try it. No way. <laughs> no good. No good. Just the soft shells? Just the soft shell. And the, um, sometimes a hard shell, if times are hard. But you went fishing. Money was very tight growing up. Actually, my family was in the property row and we didn't know it. <laughs> because all of our friends were in the same boat, going to a get family gathering and somebody bringing in swamp cabbage, which is the heart of a cabbage palm, and cooking it with real cow butter. Wow, that now sounds that, good. Man, that was good. I have a cousin that, the Ovary Unions, and he brought a huge 
12 quart pot full of swamp cabbage that he had prepared. Can you still get swamp cabbage? If you know where to go. <laughs> my husband was from Illinois. His father, my father-in-law was from England. They didn't cook and their stomachs couldn't handle country cooking. So the only time I got country cooking was like rutabagas cooked in bacon grease, black-eyed peas, conch peas, turnip greens, collard greens. It's when I came home to mama's. <laughs> yeah, right. I and bet. when we came home on leave, mama would make sure and cow's tongue, oxtail soup, things like that mama would have. In those days and times, you weren't uh, given time off for sick leave or anything like that when dad worked for the railroad. If you missed a day's work, you missed a day's pay. Sure. Do you remember um, what his salary might have been? Do you have any idea what that could have been? And about what time? I remember in 1954, seeing my dad's paycheck for 40 hours, and I think he was making 75 cents an hour mm -hmm. because I was making a dollar an hour at Central Truck Lines, my first job. Yeah, but can you remember any of the changes that took place from when you left to uh, go with your husband for his career and then when you came back to where you're at now? Did anything strike you as having changed quite a bit? The town died. The town did. When I grew up, Dr. Harvard had an office down where the Main Street Eatery is, and that was upstairs. Doc Baton had the uh, drugstore. You had a prescription, you filled it there. Mm -hmm. And over on where the Browning Insurance is was the post office, and across the street here where the parking lot is was the Rogers Department store, and then up and the next block where Sun Bank is, I believe was Lingle, part of that was Lingles. Now where the drive-in is for Sun Bank was the Lingles, part of that was Lingles and I think a law office or something. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Sun Bank was just a little shot on the corner, <laughs> not the whole block. Sure. And next to it was the Whitehurst uh, law firm. Okay. Whitehurst and Sons. And you had on the back side, you had L and L furniture on the street that runs by the library. The ten cent stores went out of business. Hope's Drug Store went out of business. Murphy's Drug Store, um, the Brooksville Theater. I mean, everything that I grew up knowing. Because when we came, we were living at home in '59 and '60. They still had Hancock's Road, um, Five and Dime, until Lois Hancock, I guess, got too old to run it. Right. And Weeks, Department, uh, Weeks Hardware has been here since I was a kid. Wow. Do you remember going in there as a kid? Oh, yeah. Uh, do you remember any other major events that happened in the county at any point during the time that you were here? Other than State Road 50 coming in and putting her name the county on the map. What was that? What was that like? Uh, the, when, when you first heard that they were going to build a road straight through, I mean, really build one and pave it, do you remember your reaction to that? We thought it was wonderful because you could come into town without driving a dirt road and right. potholes right. or water on the road. When Jack went overseas in 1959, he went, flew to a Port Muller, Alaska on the dew line, which is the Aleutian chain. Taking him down 41 through Masaryk Town, we drove through water. The highway was flooded to get him to Tampa Airport for him to fly out. And I remember when Spring Lake overshot its banks. Do you remember that? Yeah, uh, my second son Richard was like a year and a half. Less must have been three. And my mother had been to work in town and came home and saying, Spring Lake has cut a gulch through from the lake out to where it went into a man named Mr. Thomas's pasture. So we took those two toddlers and walked the length of Spring Lake past all the uprooted trees, and it was a gully, like a, a canyon, that cut through. And my dad, when he came home from work and Mama told him what was happening, he couldn't believe it either. He said, I learned to fish there. Well, I used to go swimming in Spring Lake. Were there other people from the Spring Lake area out there when you all walked through oh, yeah. to see what happened? Do you remember any of the conversations or just the general um, state of mind at the time? Shock, amazement, how can this happen? Because it was, you know, took out like a hillside. We'd never seen anything like that, you know, a disaster. And so we were dumbfounded. Sure. 
Uh, were there already ideas floating around about how they were going to remedy the situation or? Main attitude I remember is let nature take its course and what'll be will be. That was a lot of the air, you know, the attitude when I was growing up that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If a gully runs, you put a, you know, you put a culvert in. So you remember hurricanes coming through. Uh -huh. um, in what ways did the community, how did they clean up? Because, you know, now we've got, you know, insurance and all sorts of uh, complicated ways that processes that need to happen after big hurricanes or, you know, a lot of damage happens. How did the residents of Fernando County handle um, disasters or, you know, significant damage from Mother Nature? If you needed a major building or something, usually your family and friends came in from the community. It was a lot of uh, community help each other. A lot mm -hmm. like the Amish people, I think. Everybody was more neighborly. Neighborly? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you had a problem, your friends would help you out. But most people were self-sufficient. You had a couple boards and a piece of tin and the tree hit the house, you got a couple boards, went up on the roof with a piece of tin and nailed it over the hole. Right. <laughs> I know that's what my dad did when a um, post oak fell on the corner of the house. Oh, really? Dad just got out the ladder, got his hammer and nails. Well, he did a lot of woodwork mm -hmm. and went up, patched it. That was it? That was it. Yeah. You didn't, you made do. There was a lot of that growing up that the kids now have no idea. My children and grandchildren have no idea. When I was growing up there along the river at the bridge at 50 and with, on the Withlacoochee, there was sloughs full of fish. High water came, the sloughs filled up. You didn't have people getting flooded out because the old crackers knew to build. You go out when you went to buy a house, you went and looked at the trees for the water marks. Ridge Manor, when they build around that lake, thinking they were smart every year when we have a hurricane, those houses go into water. Do you remember um, <clears throat> when they announced that they were going to develop Spring Hill? Yeah. <laughs> Who would want to live in that sand bed? I mean, it was white sand, palmetto scrub. Dirt was white, it had no nutrients. I mean, to us, why do that? I mean, you couldn't grow a crop there because my family back generations were farmers, so you can't grow, grow, put a grow there, you can't grow a crop. Right, so what's the point, right? <laughs> yeah. What was the point? Now I hear they're having sinkholes and I'm thinking, you should have left a lot of that open or built. Less houses, more land around them. You find yourself in Spring Hill a lot um, for any reason? Nope. <laughs> Stay out of there. When we retired in 1980, my, we came home at in April, and my husband said, we went to a realtor and he says, where do you want to live? I've got houses in Spring Hill and all this. And I said, not only no, I want east, east of Brooksville. I want a house in the middle of five acres. I do not want to hear my neighbors flush their commode. I've had enough of that in the military. Clearly, the area between Brooksville and Wikiwachi has changed significantly. It's become Spring Hill. How do you feel about the way that Spring Lake area or East Fernando has evolved? Spring Lake has lost the groves. The year my husband died, they had his military funeral in 83, February of 83. There was beautiful groves surrounding the Spring Lake Cemetery. Either that fall or the winter of 84, the groves froze. Because dad had an aunt that had quite a few groves that her and her husband had uh, started when they were young. And Aunt Thelma Mountain was in her 70s then. And I can't remember all that went on, but I remember Aunt Thelma being in her 70s and her saying, I'll put pines where the tree, where the grove is. I'm not redoing the grove. It took too much out of us to do it the first time. Do you um, remember spending times in the groves, either just walking through the, the orange groves and everything or? No. Not really? because it was something that you didn't do. Back in those days, you didn't walk through the groves or anything like that. We didn't know then what they do now that a lot of the diseases will travel that way. And 
you were brought up with a lot of respect for people's property. Like when we went to Spring Lake, Uncle Roy would say before we left, let's go down in a grove and get a bag of oranges for the, and send home with you. And to me, that was a major treat. Yeah. Because he grew tangerines, oranges, and grapefruit. Mm. So we don't, Uncle Roy would always send me home with fruit. The kids now are not taught respect of right. other people's property and rights. They want everything given to them. Mm -hmm. And it's a shame because they've lost a lot of the things that my aunt generation had was, they lived in, in were a community. Um, where do you see the county going from here? I see it surviving. And hopefully they'll get some industry in because I think one of the major employers is Swift Mud, which is state. Of course, you hear that cussed a lot too. But it's one of the better things that's come into the county is protecting our water and our wild habitat for the deer and the, like at my daughter's house, if you go out early in the morning and sit to have coffee on the front step, you can see deer walk across. We have one old doe that's had fawns and usually once in the season, we'll see the old doe and her babies coming across the property. But most years we can count five does with their babies. Protecting our, our habitat, habitat absolutely. I think is a main thing that Hernando County should start thinking about. Just and right. get us some industry in here that gives the young people a place to work. Mm -hmm. Because right now it's hard for a junior in high school to find a job. Mm 